Pardon? Okay, we're back in session. We'll go to the last item for tonight is the uh, Beirut Memorial Grove. Glenn, please. All right. Well, thank you, Mayor and Council, and um, very happy to have Michael LaCorey and I to talk to you this evening. We have some good news to report to you, particularly about your advisory committees and how they have given a recommendation um, to, to go ahead with the project as it is. But for the purpose of those folks watching at home and so that we kind of memorialize the history, I'm just going to go back a little bit further than, um, than what we passed in the, that we've done in the past as it was. You folks will definitely remember as a result of the incidents of October 23rd, 1983, there came to be a real need to use the city's memorial tree program and out of that, 273 trees were eventually planted along the median of Lejeune Boulevard and along Lejeune Boulevard. And they were an impressive statement of our community's um, uh, recognition of the significance of that day and other items. They have stood testament of time, but time's not been very kind to them. And the Bradford pairs that were there um, found themselves at the object of many uh, errant car, or sometimes um, storms that would pop up in the summer, or even hurricanes that occasionally came our way and did things such as that. The mere nature of the tree was not, it, the tree was about a 25 year tree, and so consequently there came to be a conversation about where to put this tree and what to do about um, actions in the past, actions to, to put uh, them all in one place as a result of the construction that was taking place with the, with the base entrances. As a result, particularly of the Wilson Gate, um, our first option you approved was actually to be adjacent to the Lejeune Memorial Gardens. But as we learned, that was not going to work because of some restrictions on that property and other problems with the composition of it. But it was going to be an impressive sight of having those 273 trees all in one place and the sight of being able to walk through it and also see it from the, drive, from the um, passing motorist was all thought to be something that was going to be an impressive way of honoring these people who are represented in those trees. But there came to be a second location, and that's the current location that we have now. And the benefit of this is most of the people from the 8th Marine Regiment who were, um, that saw their demise as part of their action in Beirut were stationed at Camp Geiger, the Geiger Tigers. And so being directly across from the um, Camp Geiger, it's, it's, it came to be a, a fortuitous and um, a fortunate event to do that as it was. So we have uh, a new concept of what you folks looked at and, uh, and subsequently approved. And this was the view of what this could look like with the autumn blooming cherry as it was from that, from that effort. Now, we did go back to the beautification and appearance and the Beirut Memorial Advisory Board, and they looked at the locations. And there was they who liked the location immediately adjacent to the Lejeune Memorial Garden. And it was they who recommended that you choose the autumn blooming cherry as it was, and that all advanced and came to be memorialized in the construction that actually began last, uh, well actually in 2013 and, and ran over into 2014 as it was. This is a shot that was taken in early January as part of um, what was being done as, as, as the project um, with the construction of the irrigation system and a view from kind of afar of what was being done over there. Um, this spanned through um, February and as a result of that, that's when they actually started um, um, planting some of the trees and some of the efforts there and uh, don't let their attire um, um, fool you there. It was cold during some of this time as it was. And there were a, a number of actions that, um, that caused them to put through the um, paces of the planting and other things that were being done out there of the trees at the site. So when spring came, we were very encouraged with seeing um, you know, new little growth on the trees and things such as that. Um, but as it came to be, um, particularly in the summer, um, that wasn't what we were seeing. We saw a number of a lot of mortality in those trees and um, the site itself was not looking as um, the way that you thought it should look at that time. There were some bright spots, but few among them as it was. Mm. And as a result of that, um, the state and the city talked together about what, what would be done about this. As you know, a study was done basically about what was some, some of the problems and what some of the things were there. Um, the basically the decision was that, that the city had with them was the DOT was to let the city handle this presentation to handle the rebuilding and that's where Michael LaCorey comes in when he was asked to get ready to plant again those 273 autumn blooming cherries right well we what we did is we took the report we read the report and uh, 
what we found uh, was many things that had happened out at the site, but what stuck out to us was that the soils were in such bad shape. Uh, we had some information from the state that led to that. We ourselves went out and we took 80 soil samples just to be sure to see, uh, make sure that this was correct. And what we saw was soils out there around 8.8 .8 for pH. And just so you know, the autumn cherry uh, would prefer a soil of about six and a half. Um, so that, that's a challenge we had moving forward with this tree. So how were we going to move forward if we kept with the autumn cherry? Um, we would have to look at potentially changing out two to three feet of soil throughout the site, pulling it back, backfilling with new soils. Uh, that would be very costly for us to move forward. Uh, we could use chemicals on the site to help the soils, but that would be very costly, very maintenance driven, and take years for us to accomplish a goal. So to continue moving forward with the autumn cherry would be uh, something we could do, but would be a never-ending uphill battle. So, <coughs> Jason Smith, our horticulturalist, and I attended a Green and Grow show in January, and we ran into a gentleman by the name of Mike Worthington, who owns Worthington Farms in, Farms in Greenville, North Carolina. Uh, we were familiar with him a little bit, uh, found out that he actually approached us. He, he knew about the Grove, was interested in it, and wanted to talk to us about it. We sat down with himself and actually Dr. Barbara Fair from NC State and had conversations on what we felt like the best way to move forward was. Uh, after about an hour conversation, uh, we agreed that maybe another tree might be the best move for us as a city to get the result we're looking for. Ultimately, with the cherry, the result uh, I think that the board wanted, or both boards wanted, and I think the city wanted, was that uh, foliage, a uh, good flowering tree at some time during the event. That's just not going to be guaranteed with the current soil conditions that we have. So we looked at another tree and um, that was the Chinese pistache, which, which, which is right here, which, which has great foliage throughout the year. Now as we move further into the year, around uh, October, you'll begin to start seeing this kind of foliage, the orange or even red looking foliage. Uh, it will last from six to eight weeks depending on the weather. It won't be in full bloom during the Beirut Memorial, uh, but it will be already turning. So you'll get a good wow factor. We feel like it's the best tree for the area. Uh, the good news about the tree is uh, we will still have to do some treatments to the soil out there for the grass, but the tree itself is a very hardy tree it can survive in this soil and that was really uh, one of the main things in us heading in this direction. I think we were lucky to find a tree that's going to add some color during that time of year for us to move forward with. He did indicate that it wouldn't necessarily be at the peak of its fall color on October 23rd but it would have color. And so that was very much. Now the presentation you just saw is the presentation that was given with the Mr. Worthington in person here. Uh, before a special joint meeting that we called the Beirut Memorial Advisory Committee and um, the, ja the Jacksonville um, Environmental and Appearance Advisory Committee. And during that time, we let them talk with Mr. Worthington, and he was very um, conversant with them. Um, they asked questions, and he was quizzed on it. Um, Dr. Woodruff was um, very much involved in these conversations. And at the end of the meeting, there was a motion made by each of the boards that was unanim unanimously adopted by each of the boards that indicated they favored this Chinese padash and they favored um, advancing in the plan that the city had to, to put this together. And so it is with that that we bring forward to you um, what your advisory committees have recommended, what your staff has found as an option here, and a way forward um, to proceed with the advancement of the Beirut Memorial Group. Let me make just a couple of comments. The DOT has funded the project to this point. The DOT has agreed that they will continue to put a reasonable amount of money into this project, but as we discuss with them the extent that the site would need to be rebuilt in order to go ahead with the cherry tree they initially uh, suggested, they said no, that they would not go there. If you think of the site today, it has an irrigation system, 
It has grass sod that's already been there. If you're going to stay with the cherry, then you're going, as Michael said, you're going to have to bring in a lot of, a lot of new fill material. It is not fill material that you're simply going to dig a hole and put in. You're talking about literally coming into the entire site with thousands of cubic yards of material to build up or to blend with so that the pH drops from 8 to 8.8 .8 all the way down to 6. That means that your irrigation system is going to be lost. That means that your sod's going to be lost. While that was an important factor, the real factor that has changed our opinion on the tree is that the horticultural gardens that grow these trees around here have said, well, if you pick that tree because you think it's going to be blooming in October, good luck. The manuals will tell you that. The growers will tell you that really isn't what happens. And they've also said that with the pH, unless it is addressed, that tree is not going to survive. When the DOT heard that, they said, well, folks, here's what we're willing to do. We are willing to continue at a reasonable financial level, but we are not interested in the level of literally $450,000 that's going to be needed to completely <laughs> retrofit that site. They also said this to us. When whatever tree you pick and plant the second time, that's the last dollar the DOT has put in. Now, Anthony and Ron and Michael and Glenn have done an excellent job negotiating with the DOT. What the DOT is now saying is they will continue with this project. They do support changing the trees. We're currently, currently negotiating with them an interlocal agreement where they will give to the city Roughly 175000 is that where we are? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Roughly $175,000. We have asked them not to send it back out to bid. There are a lot of reasons why the cherries didn't make it, and there's no need to go into those. If we're going to be responsible for this garden in the future, we want to be the ones who are selecting the trees, literally the trees that we're going to plant. We want to be the ones who are involved in planting them so that we're assured that they're installed to our standards. Our goal tonight is to ask you to concur in changing the tree based upon the recommendation of your advisory groups. Once you have accomplished that, if you're comfortable with that, then Michael and Jason, Jason is our horticulturalist, they will actually go to Tennessee where we have identified a grower that has this quantity of trees, of this tree. They will hand select each tree. The trees will not be, they will not be raised in the ground and then cut with a spade and put into burlap. These are going to be trees that will be roughly two inches in caliper and roughly 12 feet in height when they're brought on site. They're going to be container grown so that we don't have some of the other issues that we had in the past. But this is our recommendation to you tonight, is that you concur with changing the tree, authorizing us to enter into an interlocal agreement, the details of which will still come to you for approval, so that we might move forward with the project. Now, Ron, you were involved in this. Any additional comments or clarifications? No, sir. Michael? No, sir. Go in. We're open to questions. <clears throat> Growth rate? It can be 30 feet, but he didn't think that it would get that tall and, here. And it's a slow-growing tree, which on one hand is a detriment, but really that's the kind of tree we want out there. It's going to have a good foundation. Uh, it's going to take a little time for it to grow once we plant them, but the foundation of the tree, because it is a slow grower, is going to be in good shape as years go by. So really at five to seven years is when you're really going to see that tree become a really wow factor. It'll still give us that in the beginning, but uh, just like any tree, it's going to have to grow some. And you're going to get trees that are sufficiently yeah. already two inch caliper or better. Right. And we believe the growth rate is going to be roughly two to three feet per year. Mm -hmm. What's the longevity again? Hopefully around 30 years. Yes, yeah. ma'am. What about the root system? Is it above or below? It's below. Below. So it wouldn't hamper your landscaping. So. Well, if NC State busted, I, I guess it should be okay. Right? <laughs> I think the other part is is that 
we heard from landscapers and some people that even on uh, Michael's staff who have planted this tree in parking lots on one testimony was given that um, they did it on the hottest day in August two years ago and that tree survived. This is an the Texas, I forget what was the organization in Texas, but one of those universities in Texas. Uh, they have advanced this tree as a tenacious tree and said it just adapts and goes and just keeps on going. And obviously as you can see from this diagram, it does have a good fall color. And the fact that it lasts past October is a good thing for us. You will still have a mortality rate of probably 10 to 20 percent as with any large planting. Mm -hmm. Therefore, the DOT has agreed to authorize the purchase of 300 trees. The additional trees will be planted and kept off-site so that as trees on the garden were to pass away or demise, I love Glenn's term, demise instead of die. <laughs> But as that happens, we will have trees of the same era and same growing style so that when we move them in, it won't suddenly be a little thin tree out there among the big ones. That's our request to you this evening. We would like direction. How long should it take? Well, our hopes, whether we have uh, 23 or 273, we, we will have some trees in this, this uh, late summer. Uh, we'd like to think we can get them all in. I'm a little skeptical to say that today, but definitely that's a goal for us to have that planted. We think we can do it. Well, Paris, we have a consensus that was that what you were thinking, Jerome? Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. That concludes the items. <laughs> that concludes the items we had for you. Thank you. Uh, anybody else have anything? Let us entertain a motion to adjourn the workshop. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye.